Welcome to the second half of our discussion on vehicle dynamics. In this section, we're going to talk about driver control inputs and how those inputs affect the car's tires. We're also going to discuss load transfer in a car and the various issues that can occur because of it. In a real car, slip is felt via G-forces. As you approach the limit, the driver senses or feels what is happening. In the sim, tire noise provides the feedback as to what is happening, and this is how the sim driver determines how close they are to the limit of grip. Once the optimum slip angle is exceeded, the available grip falls off and the tire begins to slide. Unless more load is put in the tire, or the speed is reduced, the tire will not respond as desired. Aerodynamics, also known as aero, can help with loading by putting more downforce on the tires as the speed increases relative to the car's static weight. When you step on the accelerator, the weight of the car is shifted more toward the rear of the car. This puts more force on the rear tires, thereby providing more grip. When you brake, the opposite happens, and the load shifts toward the front of the car, putting more load on the front tires while cornering. You want the car balanced with an equal load on the front and rear. Creating an imbalance with abrupt pedal input will lead to understeer and oversteer. If, while cornering, there's too much addition of throttle, the car will understeer. If your response to the understeer is an abrupt lift of the throttle, something called trailing throttle oversteer, or TTO, is the result. While cornering, if the throttle is applied too abruptly and the car has enough horsepower, then oversteer is again the result. This is because the rear tires cannot handle both the cornering load and the acceleration load at the limit of the tire's grip during braking. If too much steering is added without releasing some brake pedal pressure, then understeer happens, as the front tires cannot do both jobs at the limit. When the brake pedal is released too quickly while initiating a turn, also known as trail braking, the car will tend to oversteer, as the front tires have most of the grip, causing the back end to get loose. Slow release of the brake, on the other hand, will produce predictable and manageable rotation that can be used to effectively pinpoint the car, thus giving you optimum grip through the turn. Remember, the best fix for understeer is a slight lift to the throttle. Do not add more steering. The best fix for oversteer is staying off the throttle and steering in the same direction as the slide, as well as being prepared for the second reaction slide by quickly steering back in the original direction. If you don't catch the slide and you continue to spin, be a good sport and lock up the brakes instantly so that the other drivers around you can better predict which way you'll be going. Using your eyes effectively is the real way to determine good car control. As most of your information in the sim is based on visual cues rather than feeling, looking in the right direction makes all the difference as we will be discussing in the Using Your Eyes video. Don't look where you think the car is going. Instead, look in the direction you want to go. Looking far enough ahead of the car will give you a better perspective and more time to make good decisions about what you want the car to do. To practice what you've learned, spend some time on our skid pad, known as centripetal circuit, in each of the cars you'll be driving, experimenting with all of the situations that we've mentioned. Pay close attention to your inputs on the controls, and the resulting reaction of the car with the lack of seat of the pants feel on the sim. You really need to think about and plan for what you want the car to do. Also, focus on where you're looking and if it is far enough ahead of the car. If everything feels too fast and you're having a hard time catching slides, make a conscious effort to look further ahead and in the direction you want the car to go.